So holiday celebrations are right around the corner and here to help us dress up our windows with her DIY Christmas curtains is Orly. These are absolutely adorable. So cute, right? But before we do wait. that, everybody knows Christmas party and the holidays really aren't <laughs> complete without music, right? Obviously. And this year, Hallmark Channel has teamed up with Sirius XM to do something very cool. They are bringing us Hallmark Channel Radio on Sirius XM Channel 70. And as a Christmas gift, when you subscribe to one of Sirius's best packages, you can get a free all-new Echo Dot, and it's only $8.33 a month for your first six months membership. That's a great deal. Some restrictions do apply, so make sure to check out all of the special offer details at SiriusXM.com slash Hallmark Channel for all your deets. Meanwhile, we are back to your beautiful curtains. Tell me about this. This is adorable, Orly. This is so fun. So I was inspired by the idea of like Santa curtains. <laughs> like, I mean, it's cute. What would the curtains be like in Santa's house? And so I wanted to do something that was a nod to Santa that could also be simple enough that it could be added in different spaces throughout the house, kind of instantly adding a little bit of Christmas cheer to whatever window, even windows that don't necessarily have curtain right. rods on them yet. Okay. And so that's the reason why I really wanted to focus on doing a window like this where it's set inside. So when you're getting ready to do your own, pick a window in your house. It can be something small, maybe right above your kitchen sink, something small. You're just going to take the measurements and create your own pattern. Okay. Right. So that's kind of the, the very first thing you're going to do. Obviously, that's going to vary depending on the window you're using. So I'm not going to show you how to do that. Just take the measurements you need um, to create. Window. Yeah, Perfect. to create that own pattern. All right. Exactly. Well, you came in earlier today and you got started. I did. Show I us did. What you did. So there is my pattern. Now it looks odd because it's actually half a pattern because anytime you do it, you know you're gonna be able to fold your fabric. Okay. So I only made a half a pattern. Now I'm taking my uh, velvet fabric and it's non-stretch, that is really important. And I'm laying that center piece on the fold. That way now when I trace out my pattern and I cut, I'll end up with one piece that opens up in half. So you'll see, I'm gonna cut there. I just follow the line that I gave myself. And now I knew that I was gonna create a fur trim and it's really important that the fur trim mimicked the shape of the bottom of my curtain. Okay. So I went across my pattern, marking four inches across, and then just connected each one of those dots until I got myself a little pattern that was identical to my curtain pattern. All right. Now I folded my fur in half and I laid my piece down and I did the same thing. I just tr uh, traced that right onto the back side, obviously, so that you're not gonna see the marker. Now when you're cutting fur, it's always really important to try to slide your fabric scissors, really to only cut like the fabric that holds the faux fur together. Okay, because otherwise cut, falls yeah, apart. Yeah, you wanna cut as little bit of that actual fur as possible. Okay. Now this is our side seam. So you're just gonna fold over the side seam and give yourself as much of a side seam as you want. That just depends on the kind of pattern you created. Now a straight stitch to close it. On curtains, I usually like a heftier seam, which is is why you can see that hem there is about an inch to an inch and a half. I just always think it looks kind of nice and hefty there. Right. So now I'm doing my other side, obviously two sides, two hems. And the last thing that we're gonna do is actually just create the casing for our curtain rod. So I decided two inches was gonna be about right for my curtain rod, so I fold it over put my measuring tape, mark two inches, slide down, do the same thing until I've given myself, I've pinned two inches all the way across. Now just again, a simple straight stitch is gonna close it up, and there you can see that's my casing. Okay. So then I just fed that right through. There's my curtain without any of the trim. You can see I just fed it through the curtain rod. Okay. So that and was that base. Yeah. All right, well you said a simple straight stitch. Now yeah. if I'm not an expert sewer like you are, can yeah. I still do this? Can you I actually, just no sew? You can. Really? Which is super, super cool, yes. So I, I'm always a huge fan of Fabri-Tac. That's like my favorite one that I always use. And I would say just replace any stitches that I did with fabric glue. Okay. So you just wanna make sure in order for it to be able to hold together really well, first you always wanna press your seam so you have a nice crisp edge. Right. Cause you're not getting that with sure. sewing. Then add the glue. And for the top, for the casing, just make sure that fabric's not too heavy. That's why you don't want okay. that stretch. Because right, it'll like pull work, on the though. seam. That's yeah. fine. That's like stocking. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's it's a lightweight, a okay. lightweight velvet, so it's perfect. Beautiful. All right, and then we added our fur here. So how did you add your fur trim? So what I would recommend doing is either again fabric glue or hot glue. Either one's gonna work. And you, depending on whether you want to add some uh, distance to it, some length, you would either, you know, like we can either add it just like right there, or you could pull it all the way up. If let's say the measurement you did was exactly right, then you're gonna line your edges up like this. Okay. Right? right, together, so it just depends. And now all you would do is add. Just go straight across. Oh, straight across. Now so here's a gonna... question, while you're doing this. Yeah. So this is kind of just like a one-sided curtain. So this would be something for you to only 
to be viewed only on the inside of the house. Yeah, okay, so that's a really good point. If this, if you want to put this curtain somewhere, maybe by the front, like in the front of the house, like we have these beautiful windows in the sure. front of our house. If you want to have it in the front and you know people are going to see it when they walk in, you essentially have to double this curtain. All right. So you're going to take, create two pieces of your red and two pieces of your white because, Debbie, you can't, Normally, when we do a trim on the bottom, yes. you can just create a double wide piece and sandwich it, right? Yes. This is curved. You couldn't oh sandwich God. it because it's right. not gonna, it's gonna pucker. So you really do kind of need to create two separate pieces and add them onto both sides. That way from both sides, it looks perfectly clean finished. That'd be beautiful It too, would be beautiful though. from yeah. the outside. Yeah, so, okay. so cute. And the material isn't that expensive, so it'd be worth doing. No, it's not. It's, it's absolutely not. Because in order to buy this, the, the faux fur, you're buying, you know, you're buying it by the yard, you're gonna end up with so much you don't need. So you might, might as well, well go it. through and cut it. Exactly. Um, but yeah, I just wanna say, like, even when we stand here, like come with me in the middle, like this could be a really cool like photo backdrop, even for, for a party. party. It looks like a postcard. How fun would that right? be? Right? It's really, really cute. fun. And it's so simple to add to any window. Now, I know you have to leave a few inches on the other side to, to fold over, correct? Right, exactly. So you would go this way, and when you get to the end, if you were making it one-sided, you would just fold it over and make sure to hem it that way when you're seeing it from the side like this. It's feels You're not clean. seeing that, that raw edge there, yeah. Now, what if I didn't want to just do a, a rod in here? What if I wanted to hang a proper curtain rod? So, in this window, because I wanted it set in with the beautiful Balsam Hill um, garland that we have, I wanted a tension rod, so that's what I chose. Okay. If you wanted to do another curtain rod that was suspended above with no garland, you want to basically add for yourself 10 to maybe 15 inches all the way around. You're oh, going to need okay. that extra distance to go over your molding because you always want the curtain to go on the outside. Right. You also want it to go above. So okay. you basically would make take all of your measurements like framing out of your okay. window instead of inside of your that window. That is really beautiful, Orly. And Isn't then you fun? finished it with the tassels. Well done, it's good Orly. good stuff. Santa Looks would be like proud, Santa I feel like. would be proud. He's coming to town soon. <laughs> we can ask him. You can find today's instructions at hallmarkchannel.com and you can learn all about Orly's other projects on her website. I highly recommend you visit there.